Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about functional anatomy of triceps brachii. Uh, so starting with just a little bit of basic anatomy, um, we have three heads of triceps brachii, hence its name triceps, three heads. Of the three heads, only one crosses the shoulder and the other two do not. Um, so of course, all three cross the elbow. That's their primary action is to extend the elbow. Uh, but the long head, because it also crosses the shoulder, uh, that changes the advantages and disadvantages of how the muscle works. Um, and it also adds more actions. Uh, so the long head, in addition to elbow extension, is also capable of extension and adduction of the glenohumeral joint. Um, so looking at the long head more specifically, again, because it's biarticular, meaning that it crosses more than one joint, we have to look at issues of passive and active insufficiency. Now, I linked in the description below another video to review the, those concepts of passive and active insufficiency, but here I want to focus on how they apply to triceps specifically. Um, so passive insufficiency occurs when we have a muscle that's crossing more than one joint, and therefore the position of one of those joints is going to affect the amount of range of motion we have at the other joint. Um, so passive insufficiency occurs in the long head of the tricep uh, when we have simultaneous flexion of the glenohumeral joints and the elbow joints at the same time. Um, so essentially because the long head extends both of those joints, we're limited in the amount of flexion that can occur in each of those joints at the same time, just simply by the, the maximum length, the extensibility of the muscle, there's a limit. And so if we are fully flexed at one of the joints, that's going to limit the amount of full flexion that we can achieve at the other joint simultaneously. And that's passive insufficiency. Active insufficiency is another disadvantage of biarticular muscles. Um, so in, for the long head of the tricep, it's when we have simultaneous elbow extension and glenohumeral hyperextension. Um, so what happens in a biarticular muscle, so a muscle that crosses more than one joint, is if we have sort of laxity in one joint, then that's going to limit the ability to produce tension in the muscle to cause movement at the other joint at the same time. So if we take this example here of like a tricep kickback, in that case, the glenohumeral joint is hyperextended. Now, because the long head of the tricep extends the shoulder, that means that that muscle, the tendon and the muscle at the glenohumeral joint are in a shortened position. Now, if the muscle is also in a shortened position at the elbow, so if we're in full extension there too, the muscle can't shorten to a great enough extent to maintain tension at both joints at the same time. So what we have in that case is the muscle is, it needs to shorten to a great enough extent because um, we are in hyperextension in the shoulder and extension in the elbow, and it can't shorten that much. So it's sort of like there's laxity, like there's looseness in the muscle and the tendons, and it's not able to shorten enough to transmit force to the bones that we're trying to move. So that's active insufficiency. Now, biarticular muscles also are advantageous depending on the position of the joints. So the nice thing about biarticular muscles is that the muscle can shorten at one joint and lengthen at the other. And when they do that, the muscle is able to maintain a consistent length, which, which is optimal for force production. So the more we can maintain a consistent length of the muscle, the greater the force and the more consistent the force will be throughout the movement. So in the case of the long head of the tricep, we have that biarticular advantage when the elbow is extended and the glenohumeral joint is flexed at the same time. So in that case, um, we have an advantage of being a biarticular muscle. So for example, this overhead tricep, in that case, the glenohumeral joints are flexed and then they're going through flexion and extension of the elbow. So in that case, the long head of the tricep would be optimized. So in this tricep kickback, the long head would not be used versus in this overhead tricep, 
then we are using the long head of the bi or of the tricep in addition to the other two heads of the tricep. Um, so then when we look at the issue of adduction versus abduction of the glenohumeral joint, um, so the glenohumeral adduction engages the long head. So long head of the tricep, one of its actions is glenohumeral adduction. So if we're doing an overhead tricep, if we've got the elbows pointed out, that means that the shoulders are abducted. When we're in that position and we're doing an overhead tricep, then in that case, the long head disengages and instead we're really targeting the other two heads. If we want to engage the long head of the tricep, then we need to adduct the shoulders so that they're tucked in, so the elbows are tucked in, and then we're going up and down with the shoulders adducted. Now we are fully engaging the long head of the tricep in addition to the other two heads. Um, so to wrap up here, I just want to briefly talk about the difference between a tricep push-up and a regular push-up in terms of long head uh, activation. So on a tricep push-up, so in that case, we're talking about this picture on the top here. Um, so the glenohumeral joints are adducted, the elbows are tucked in at the sides, and you're going up and down in a push-up. So just like where we have the overhead tricep, we want to keep the elbows in to activate long head. It's the same exact concept when we're looking at a tricep pushup. So with the glenohumeral joints adducted, elbows in, the long head is at an advantage because as you're pushing up, the shoulders are flexing as the elbow is extending, which is exactly the scenario where the long head of the tricep is at its greatest advantage. Um, so it targets the long head of the tricep in addition to the other two heads. Uh, compared with a regular push-up, so that's where we have the glenohumeral joints abducted, like we see in this bottom picture here. Elbows are out to the side, just a classic regular push-up. Uh, so in that case, the long head is at a disadvantage while the glenohumeral joint is most adducted, most abducted, that should be. Um, so like when we're in this lowered position and the glenohumeral joints are fully abducted, the long head of the tricep is at a disadvantage, just like with the overhead tricep with elbows out, long head is at a disadvantage. So in a push-up, when we're in that position, the long head's not going to engage to as great of an extent, but as you're pushing up, now the shoulders are adducting and flexing. So it's horizontal adduction is really the combination of those two movements. And so that's happening as the shoulders are extending. Um, so during a regular push-up, the long head will become engaged as you get further up in the movement. And then as we get lower in the movement, um, then the long head is going to be at more and more of a disadvantage as we become more and more abducted. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.